Hello, welcome to another special edition of Plat Chat, where we will now assess the Florida mayhem as they prepare to enter 2020. Now, last year and the year before, this team was straight poo-poo. They were really, really bad. Have they made the improvements necessary to be able to be a decent team? They're Custer believes so. I just uh, had a little chat with wow. Custer, and I, you think that they're going to be a mid-table team. No, I think they're better. I don't think they're complete trash. Well, I definitely anymore. think they're better. Here's my problem, though, with the Florida Mayhem, and I've said this a couple of times on my stream as well, is that, yes, they've made some good pickups in the offseason. They picked up Yaki, they've picked up Gandanjin. These are good pickups. I really respect those players. But I think they have left over too many players from last year who people like, for example, Karyan and Gargoyle were picked up because they had success in GOATs in the Korean contenders. Mm -hmm. These players were not picked up because they are great all-round players. These players weren't picked up even because they were the best that were available in the off-season. They were just the best available mid-season. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. there wasn't that much to pick from, and they picked these people to save a dying team in GOATs. And so when I see people claim, like, for example, that... Here's the most common claims that I hear about Florida. They had a great stage four at the end of last year. Um, they have made improvements, therefore they will be good. Like, Gargoyle was good on Roadhog, etc. You actually look back at their stage four performance. I don't know whether we'll be able to pull it up here. But um, they, you, you look at their stage four performance, the teams they beat were like Boston uh, and Toronto twice. The, the teams that are just straight up given yeah. up. Yeah, like, they, those they were the teams that are given yeah, yeah. up. They weren't trying at all. So I think that they have a situation a little similar to Dallas Fuel in 2018-2019 where they started to improve in stage four. They think that they're going to be good because they had a little bit of success and they keep the they keep too much of the uh, uh, of the, the roster around. Uh, good luck, Johnny. Bye-bye, Jonathan. Um, my, poll, my thing is I agree that they, they do have some weight uh, here, but I think the bones is okay. And that's the thing. I, as you said, like I don't know much about Yaki and Gangnam Jin, but like if you think that they're good oh they're players, good they're good if they're good players like uh, Gangnam Jin's a uh, main support Gangnam Jin is the flex support so flex like support uh, from Runaway yeah yeah oh, okay and you don't know your uh, history no I, I don't yeah. know I don't know a lot, so many of the new Yaki, players coming through. Yaki is he's been around for a long time he's very flexible a DPS player that most recently played for Runaway and when he came in Shui got benched. So Shui, the player that is now on the London Spitfire, <laughs> yeah. got benched for Yaki. And Yaki is Yaki's one of the players that could be um, a Rookie of the Year candidate. I don't think he's got the same Ooh. explosive power as like a Glister or an Edison or a, a Sparkle. But if if he's on a good team, he could be that kind of player. Is like Yaki he's, a flex DPS or a main D, uh, or hit scan DPS? He's mostly a flex DPS, but he has played stuff like Tracer in the past as well. Um, See, I think this team is about as good as your eyebrows. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I also agree. I think that they're a bottom five team. And yeah, which makes me sad because Gangnam Jin deserves better. I like if Gangnam Jin was on Atlanta Rain, just like... Yes, yeah. I mean, I don't know how, how much he'd help the team morale there, but I'm yeah. just saying that I, I feel like they have some capable players. By the way, Gargoyle, buying into Rodog hype, it's yeah, the most it's like, a hook, it's like hook meta yeah, well, I can't imagine anything stupid it's fool's gold it really it's is it's fool's gold Rodog meta well, everybody's saying meta, that Gargoyle is sick because he popped off in stage 4 just yeah. slap yourselves right now I, yeah it's, my, my, okay so here's what I like about this team okay so they have Sire player and Yaki that's a pretty solid DPS lineup. It can, it'll do okay. Is it? I think it's a middle of the table DPS. I think Sire player can pop off when you give him the right heroes, mm, but also I, I, I don't know whether like, he has the right flexibility I to be able like to play. BQB over Sire I don't. I've never really been impressed I, by I, BQB. I don't think well, BQB's I had think, a good season. Well, no, I think no, he, the whole of last year. I think BKB could be QB. Could be on like a 12, this, 13. This cleaner, sorry, team. is trying to just suck the life out of this room by vacuum. <laughs> Dude, go on, we, go have, on. We, we have the most expensive microphones in the world. Like it's not oh, yeah, going to be true. affected. Yeah, except they for this They probably picking it up, yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I don't want to talk about this team. Can we just I know, end the video? I, I also, okay, right, so my problem with this team is I have no idea. Like my, my glaring weaknesses, I, if I was looking at this team, would be Chris and Gargoyle. I think yeah. Chris never impressed me as a main support. He was very low impact uh, main support in goats and just that kind of stuff. So never really seen anything impressive of no. him. And as no. you said, Gargoyle, well, we haven't seen anything other than Roadhog. And you know, if you want to give the enemy team ult charge, then sure, go ahead and play Roadhog. But like, it's and I do you like a, fate? I think I think fate could be I all think right. Fate's solid. I don't think fate is. Do you not like fate? 
I think... I'm, I'm, I'm currently thinking whether I like Faith or Beast more. Really? You would put Faith on the same level as Beast? No. No, I'm, 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 I'm making the logical conclusion that maybe Faith is better. But I would, I'm saying I I, I'm, I'm putting him down there, you know? Like, I think that they're the bottom main tanks in the league. I oh, think Bottom that main Faith... tanks in the league when you got, like... Um... Uh, J Mac and Fusions and uh, Dreamer and these kind of like total unknown talents at the bottom. The only thing okay, maybe he's not a bottom main tank. Maybe I should. I, I need. I need to sit up straight. <laughs> okay, maybe. Maybe I, I am underrating Florida Mayhem here a bit. I don't think that this is going to be like an average squad. I think they're going no. to be like below average. And I think that's fate. He's shown in the past that he's not championship caliber either so i think when people look at this team and they go like oh maybe fate, uh, fate will lead them to victory you know like he's an experienced main tank he knows how to yeah. play the game etc he was on uh, south korea's uh, world cup team for a bit yeah. i was like no i don't really buy that like okay i could see him being a pretty good leader but also i don't know what you think but like playing with him he seems like a very dominant shot caller like he wants to lead a team and if the team doesn't agree with his ways then it's kind of messed up and so i think that fate is a bit of a risky main tank in this team because you're bringing a lot of new players you might have a new team atmosphere, maybe like Karyon and Gorgoyle, they're bringing something, and then you have like Gangnam, G uh, Gangnam Jin coming from Runaway. And then Fate is sort of like, hey, I want to be the main shot caller, I want to be the main tank, I want to lead this team. And if the other players don't buy into it, then you're running into a real problem. So I don't really buy into Florida Mayhem until I've seen something positive from them. So with Kuki as the head coach as well, so I've played with and you know worked with both of those guys yeah. a lot. I think they will take control of a lot of the team. And I think, you know, with the experience they have, and they will either lead this team down the righteous path of victory, or it might go down somewhere that no one wants to be yeah. the last two seasons. So I don't know. I, I have, I actually think they both understand the game very well, but you know, we've seen that that sometimes they just go the wrong way and yeah. it all ends in tears. Yeah, so, um, the, my uh, another big issue as well is like Karyan got brought on in order to play main tank for this team in the goats meta, right? Yeah. yeah. And I don't see him getting play time when you have fate on the roster, especially with Kuki as the head coach, oh right? God. And so what you have here is three tanks, and you have essentially fate or bust. And then you have Gargoyle or Bust. Yeah. So your fake Gargoyle tank line better be competent. Otherwise, this team is just awful. I mean, and then you also have Sire player who's a specialist, BQB who's never stepped up, and then Yaku who's very good. Buying into players' hype during the GOATS meta is the most prepare your yeah. brain move you it could really ever is. do. It really is. And that's why I'm so concerned for the game. Yeah. It was. That's why I'm so concerned about Florida. I would have liked to see them blow this roster up and start from scratch yeah. more than keep players like Karyan and Gargoyle who were very good, genuinely. Yeah. They were a good tank line in GOATS, but I don't see how that translates. And even if it does, it just locks you into the, the this like frame of thinking where yeah. you can't think outside the box of exploring different opportunities of like these wild players that are coming up from contenders you have to think oh i have gargoyle so now i must find my uh, my dps to go alongside him yeah it's yeah. it's about I, play styles as well i oh my god i can't believe i'm saying this i i almost like london spitfire more than i like I, I i could because i could see london i, I think it's somewhat it, similar yeah. i i think london spitfire it feels like i mean obviously for them am have sucked the past two seasons but I feel like I'm buying into what Lono Spitfire are doing with this roster, while this is sort of like a half-ass attempt at revitalizing the squad and like trying to do something new, but not yeah. really because you still have a Chris and Saya player, and it's just oh, it feels like they're trying to reinvent the wheel. But I'm like, you're you're no, I don't know what, where to go with this. Help now let's. Me. Let's spin this positively, though. What could happen for this team? I mean, Gundam Jin, really good player. And if they get to a meta where Sire player can pop, that guy really can just take over a match. He's like the, the league record for most, uh, most eliminations in a match. No, not most eliminations. Most final blows. He just destroyed some random team that they were playing against. I think it was us. <laughs> was it you? I think it might yeah, have been. playing Widow on Junkertown. I, no, so, no, no, he played Reaper on Junkertown. Mm. And he, he did, just yeah. we just didn't shut him down at all, and he yeah. just walked through our team. And that's why I like side player is like a lot of us. I th I think he's over hyped as a specialist. He is he's not a specialist. I think he's just a hit scan. He's completely limited to hit scan. He does not have any flexibility yeah. Yeah. as yeah. any like yes. uh, projectile player. Um, I, but I think his Hanzo has been good in the past. Am I thinking? Am I making things up? Mm, I can't remember. I mean, that is the like the the you know go to 
if you go down the path of snipers, you go from Widowmaker to Hanzo. Yeah. So yeah. I think that all Widowmaker players are that, sort uh, of con confident playing Hanzo. And that's why if you are true about Yaki, then I think Yaki side player could be really solid. And I think that might be the saving grace of this team. If that yeah. could, duo does come together and they are like a top yeah. half DPS team, I think that'll pull them up a lot. Of I ways. think if they hit the right meta though, it's all about yeah. the right yeah. meta in my yeah. opinion. Because if they hit something where Sire player is uncomfortable, BQB then has to come in. And that guy just has not performed. He got picked up mainly because he was a, a good Sombra player player who's like the best sombra player in the world we had a sombra meta and the guy was shite yeah so at this point why is he in this roster uh so i i i think it's very meta dependent yeah i think if we go to like a bastion meta maybe i could see them popping off <laughs> or like widowmaker with side player no yeah. no but honestly i i think that if you go to like bastion <laughs> so yeah, a niche no, meta to yeah it someone. is a neat no but it's totally viable right no, what, no. what you look at that roster what screams to you ah yes bastion will be the meta that you win on well half their name is mayhem <laughs> <laughs> and no but i no but there's there's some kind of like um wild card team that is capable of playing right, odd right. metas like Bastion and the like roll over like the Dallas Fuel or right, right. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. those yeah. kind of things like Soul Dynasty and Gesture is like I don't know what to do against Saya player Bastion on Junker Town yeah. help that's yeah. I can see that kind of thing the saving yeah. grace for right. Florida well, how did they do last season because I, even oh, though shoot. even though I think they're bad I think they've got to be over they right? have been boot camping in Korea as well so uh, remember I think this is a team that is actually putting a lot of eggs in the basket of like they're actually trying really hard compared to these other teams yeah I I have heard that like a bunch of teams aren't even starting to scrim until January yeah, yeah. and you have other teams like Shock Shock the best team in the league already started boot camping a month ago in Korea right yeah yeah. isn't Atlanta just sat there twiddling their thumbs I, I saw a clip yeah, from Dogman Massa's stream off on stream yeah Playing ranked. Well, uh, f I forgot that Florida got twentieth last uh, season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You were like, "Oh, they had a good stage four. and I'm like, "Yeah, they had a pretty decent stage four. and they got, like, I think they got and half their wins. three or four wins in stage four. Yeah, and yeah. that was more than half of their wins. Oh my yeah. yeah. So they uh, went six and twenty-two. Six and, I, and twenty-two. They've got to go high. I almost want to say under out of spite, but it's not, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. I no. Yeah, yeah. They've got to be over. I like think, no, okay. no team in the league, I think, is going to. Now I'm looking at the board. How low do you guys want to put these guys? Because we can put them fourteenth. I don't think any of us want to put them 12th or higher. I, I'd rather move Paris and London up and put them like 16th or 17th. But, well, why don't you just put them at 17th and just wait until the slots are No, filled? yeah, no, I'd be fine putting them 17th yeah. too. Right. The thing is, yeah, I mean... I mean, they have the p potential to be a lot better than 17th. Their yes. range is pretty well, wide. I mean, I think it's more like... I think Paris and London have more of a potential to shit the bed. I think what Mayhem have done is stop themselves... Shit in the bed. They're not going to come last. I they're, think they're, they're not no, they going to come last. Come last. Cross, yeah. They can't come last, I think. But London and Paris and Boston could come last. Yeah. Any one of those teams could come last. So I'm inclined we... to put them at 14th, thinking that things might end up shifting no. down. Like, I think Paris and London I, might shift down. Yeah, I agree. I think... Okay, do you think... Let's just ignore the numbers for a second, Jonathan. Do you think that Florida Mayhem is going to be better than Paris and London? Or better than one and not the other, or what? I. It's really close. Well, the the thing is, I think they. Might I could be... see London and Paris playing better than Florida Mayhem, but I think the odds of both of those teams fulfilling their potential is so is low. low that I, it doesn't. I make want to put sense. them at fourteenth. I'm happy to put them at. 14th. Oh my god, it hurts my but soul. But here's the thing. No, I I'm looking at players on, on this team, like. Chris, tank line is they're, they're like carry on and Chris. Like, and well, okay. BQB, how about this? And I'm like, how about 14, this? Let's, bro. let's slide Paris and London down a slot and put them in 15th. I'm good with that. No, I know, I know. Our London should not be a 17th. No, team. The more we talk about, the more I see how shit these other teams are, the more I think <laughs> London needs to go up. Well, London are already above four different teams that we haven't even put in yet. Yeah, but I think... <sighs> it's comparative, okay, oh, right? Com oh, okay, I'll be comfortable moving London down to 17 and putting Florida at 16. I'm good with that. So you think Paris is better than Mayhem, but London isn't? Yeah, I think Paris have a higher chance of ending up over Mayhem. I think they also have a chance of finishing very low, but I think that they have a... I, 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 I think this team... <gasps> yes. Man yes. alive. Chris! BQB! Saya player! Karayan! I don't know how to pronounce the guy's name because he never got played! I gargoyle, like... 
Think about that. Like they are below, they're below Paris. I think okay. they're below Paris, consistently okay. below Paris. They're more consistent. Wait, you think they're below no, Paris? No, so I think- see, uh, Yeah, I'm gonna put them in 17th. The, the argument becomes- oh, Really? Oh, yep. Who? Uh, mayhem. No, no, because my, okay. So here's my <laughs> argument is that I think through default, if we're just looking at everyone plays their like average potential, I think Mayhem is below them. But I think there is a more chance of Paris and London shitting the bed. Yes, and no, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And that becomes how do you actually list them on And a board. that's what I think is I think they should, because the consistent, uh, I think because Paris and London have a higher chance of shitting the bed and ending up, I think Mayhem should be above them because I don't think Mayhem ever falls from grace. If we put them at 17th, okay. I don't think they ever fall below 17th. I, I, I could see myself putting them at 14th with like an asterisk that there's a high prob probability we make room at 14th for someone else and we move all three of those teams down. I think that's going to happen. If we put yeah. Mayhem at 14th, there are definitely teams between Toronto and Mayhem. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm uh, almost feeling... Here's what we do. All right. I'm, I'm, Jesus here. take the wheel at this point. Mayhem here. And we put them over, obviously. Costa is Jesus, though. Yes, we put them over. And over. And then we go... Okay, yep, that's our little WTF that's bracket. That's our WTF moment. Right, uh, okay. So this okay. is our WTF moment. You probably can't read it. Uh, but no, let, no, let's do this. Hey, you do that. Yeah, let's do, let's do this. But, because oh, I, I don't... I agree with it. Oh, no, oh, it's... Oh, no, no it, it's over. No, you can't wipe with this pen. Have we just fucked up the whiteboard? <laughs> Wait, do you need water? What? Is this pen? Is this the wrong pen? Oh, I don't know. No, that's a Sharpie. <laughs> We've been writing with Sharpie the whole time. <laughs> Who got this pen? <laughs> when? This is a Sharpie. <laughs> well, that's where we're putting these teams. <laughs> <laughs> it's set in pen? stone now. Where's the other pen? This is a permanent marker. Oh, it's all gone wrong. It was on the floor, we found the pen. The oh my god, we've been writing with a Sharpie this entire time. A Magnum Sharpie. Can we afford a new one? I don't know. Well, I don't know what we're gonna do about that. I, I think that's just where the- Can you the water in any way? I don't know. No, but you, no, you can definitely take oh, Sharpie no, off. off. No, you can definitely get it off. It's very complicated though. It's a, it's a permanent marker. <laughs> permanent rankings. Right, well these are the permanent rankings then, I guess. Okay, well, all right, we've got to work around this. Uh, it's a good job we're so confident about I'm our really takes. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the last board ends up looking oh like because God. there's going to be a lot of arrows and a lot of movement, okay? What okay. a cliffhanger. Right, oh. well, we screwed that up. Okay, tune in for the next episode. Are we'll we be just trying... committing with the board? Yep, just commit. Just hard Freak. commit. Oh, my word. <laughs>